Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the fourth and final concert of the series, Out of the Silence, presented by the Bard Music Festival in collaboration with the Orchestra Now, the Bard Conservatory of Music, and the Fisher Center. My name is Whitney Slayton, Assistant Professor of Music at Bard, and a member of the Faculty of Tone. I am delighted to share in this celebration of live music making at the college and to introduce two of the extraordinary composers whose work you will hear today. My colleague Christopher Gibbs will introduce the final piece on the program. The title of this series, Out of the Silence, is based on the work that opened the first concert, a composition by the African-American composer William Grant Still. It was an apt beginning that celebrated both the return to live performances as well as the return to the stage of the work of unjustly neglected black composers. While some of them need little introduction, others have fallen into obscurity, despite their contributions to the musical life of their time. Today, Leon Botstein will lead members of the Orchestra Now, a graduate ensemble of young professional musicians in a program that brings together two composers whose names are familiar, Duke Ellington and Bela Bartok, with a figure who was world famous in his lifetime, but was then forgotten, Joseph Bologna, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges. It took nearly 200 years for his work to be rediscovered, more of him later. The concert opens with two songs by Duke Ellington, the ambassador of jazz, and arrangements by Morton Gould. Ellington came into prominence in the 1920s playing with his band at the Cotton Club in Harlem for mostly white audiences. Soon he was touring internationally and recognized as the greatest jazz musician in America. His music is deeply rooted in the blues, but he found ever new ways of exploring and expanding the form to include new kinds of expression and began to write for symphony orchestras. A true innovator, his work has remained a source of inspiration for several generations of jazz musicians. Sophisticated Lady and Solitude were introduced in the early 1930s during the Harlem Renaissance and quickly became jazz standards that were widely recorded and arranged. Gould's arrangements were made for a collection entitled String Time, released on the Columbia Masterworks label in 1946. Please welcome Leon Botstein, music director of the Orchestra Now, who will conduct Ellington's Solitude and Sophisticated Lady.
The life of Joseph Bologna, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges, is the hope of great storytelling. Bologna was born on a small island in the archipelago of Guadeloupe, the son of an enslaved woman and a plantation owner. His father provided him with an elite education. After being falsely accused of murder, he took Bologna, his mother, and his other family members to France. Bologna's mastery as a fencer brought him great attention, including King Louis XV, naming him the Chevalier de Saint-Georges. He eventually applied his virtuosity to the violin. By his mid-twenties, he performed in the newly formed Concert des Amateurs. He became the orchestra's music director and brought it into prominence, as he would later for the Concert de la Loge Olympique, the ensemble that commissioned Haydn's six Paris symphonies. As a composer, he provided his ensemble and the aristocratic salons with technically challenging violin concertos, string quartets, sonatas, and 10 symphonies concertantes, a new Parisian genre. He was held in high esteem by other composers, and his fame was such that in May 1779, John Adams, the future American president, called him, quote, the most accomplished man in Europe in writing, running, dancing, and music. Among his works are also operas, but when he was considered as director of the opera house, he faced opposition by racist singers who objected to having to, quote, submit to the orders of a mulatto. The symphony concertante, a genre popular in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, is part symphony, part concerto. Like Bologna, Mozart wrote several such pieces, the most famous being for violin and viola, which some believe was inspired by Saint George. Mozart was in Paris and is thought to have attended concerts of Saint George's music. The two composers even lived in the same house in 1778. Saint George's career continued to mix his cunning as a swordsman and music to which was added, during the French Revolution, military service. He led a battalion for the new government, the Saint-Georges Legion, against the Austrian invasion. During the Reign of Terror, he was imprisoned for some 18 months, expecting to be executed, but he was freed in 1794. Tonight, we hear St. George's Symphony Concertante in G Major.
Good evening. A footnote to the performance we just heard, the cadenza in the second movement was written by Samuel Daniela, who is a staff and faculty member of the orchestra now. We turn to the final work of this series, Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta by Bella Bartok, who is the subject of the Bard Music Festivals in its sixth season in 1995. The great Hungarian composer was a pioneer in the field of ethnomusicology as he collected folk materials from a wide geographical range, not limited to peasant music of Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia, but extending east and south to Turkey and as well to North Africa. By the age of 40, he had transcribed more than 10,000 melodies, which he spent the rest of his life analyzing and uh, had an enormous influence on his own compositions. Bartok was a fervent anti-fascist and left Europe in 1940 for New York City, where Columbia University gave him an honorary doctorate and a research appointment to continue his folk music studies. He used folk materials in various ways, such as writing sophisticated keyboard accompaniments to melodies that made them into concert pieces, or by incorporating folk music into his own compositions. But as he collected so much, he began to speak the language of folk music to such a degree that he could invent his own. As so far as I'm aware, he did not incorporate any actual folk tunes into the piece we are about to hear, yet figuring out when Bartok is quoting or alluding to a specific melody is a perilous business because he knew so much that he may have used something otherwise unknown to specialists. Bartok composed the music for strings, percussion, and celesta in 1936. It is in four movements, pairs of slow, fast, with a string orchestra that it's divided into two parts on either side of the conductor with keyboard instruments in the middle. The work offers an exquisite synthesis of folk and concert music, beginning with an intense fugue in the first movement. As the piece progresses, Bartok quite clearly draws upon a musical vocabulary, melodic turns, scales, dance rhythms, and so forth, related to folk music. And in the third movement, he adopted a piano um, piece he had written nearly a decade earlier called Out of Doors. So this is night music that wonderfully evokes sounds of nature, Perhaps you'll hear frogs, crickets, and birds, showing how sensitive Bartok was to surrounding sounds, not just those made by humans. Let me use these closing remarks to thank all those who have made these series of concerts possible, including my colleagues at the Bard Music Festival, the Orchestra Now, the Bard Conservatory of Music, and the Fisher Center all the musicians who have performed, and the board of the festival and those who so generously support us. It is you who enable the continuation of the Bard Music Festival's mission to connect music, both familiar and neglected compositions, with history, politics, art, and society, and not limit concert life to a splendid isolation of beautiful sounds. We hope that you will continue to explore the streamed programming of the Festival, Conservatory, and Fisher Center. And we are most eager to come together next summer in person to explore Nadia Boulanger and her world for the 31st Bard Music Festival. Thank you.
My name is Maria Andonia Henderson, and I'm a third-year tone bass player from Bulgaria. You may have seen me in the last three concerts in the tone bass section, playing alongside my husband, Caden, and generally trying to keep the men in my section in line. Um, there's no question that 2020 has been an extraordinary year for musicians like me. And I cannot believe that this is my last year at Tone, the Bard Music Festival, and here at Bard. There's nothing like performing live before an audience. And I also really miss our winds and brass and cannot wait to play with the full orchestra live again for audiences like you. During my time here at Tone, I have learned so much from my colleagues, our teachers, and our audiences. I have learned just how much hope the arts and music can bring, especially in times like these. But we do need your help. Your support now can keep the music playing and make more virtual concerts accessible to people like you around the world. Please consider supporting the the performance arts here at Bard. Your generosity will help us thrive. From everyone here at the Bard Music Festival, Bard and the Orchestra Now and the Fisher Center, thank you. Stay well and I'll see you soon.